like these right here. Okay, now, so here's a, see, Arrhenius' definition says, here you got HCl, what does it do? It breaks down a solution to form H positive and Cl negative. Well, that's just a dissociation, and, and that's the definition for Arrhenius, it makes H positive. Uh, that's what an acid does. Now, here's the thing, for, for the Bronsted-Lowry definition, you need something to give up a proton to something that wants to accept a proton in solution. And those are, well, chemicals like, for instance, in this example, if you take hydrochloric acid, HCl, and you put it into water, water doesn't just say, oh, dissociate in me, that's just fine. No, water doesn't say that. Water says, I am a chemical, and I react, and you know what I'm going to do? I want to take that proton away from HCl. Water, you don't just let, water doesn't just let things dissociate into itself. Water reacts with stuff. And so what happens is, the HCl reacts with water, and a proton is transferred from the HCl to the water, now, what does that do? Well, because water is a polar molecule with a partially negative end at the oxygen, it's attracting H positives in solution to form H3O positive. See, here's the thing. H positive, yeah, okay, sometimes we just say that's acidic in solution. What, uh, acids make H positive, but really what acids do is they make hydronium ion in solution. That's called hydronium. And when C HCl loses that proton to the water, it forms Cl negative ion, and here's the deal. This is called the Bronsted Lowry acid, and this is the Bronsted Lowry base. Now you say, water's not a base, water's neutral. I know, but it acts as a proton acceptor here. So it's called the Bronsted Lowry base. This because we, if you go back this way, and, and you're saying, okay, well now we want to give the proton back in this direction, this would have to give to this. So that makes this what we call on the opposite side here, we call it the conjugate acid and this is the conjugate base because it would accept a proton to reform these two right here. What we call HCl and Cl negative here because this is just a species that, that has an H in it and when it doesn't have an H in it on opposite sides of the equation we call that a Bronsted-Lowry acid-base pair. So this is a Bronsted-Lowry acid-base pair and water and hydronium are a Bronsted-Lowry acid-base pair. This is not an acid-base pair. This is the acid and the base reacting in the solution. It's not a conjugate pair. Conjugate's kind of like opposite, okay? And water and, and, and hydronium, well, sorry, and these two right here are just the products. These are the reactants. One pair, <laughs> conjugate acid-base pair, another conjugate acid-base pair. Now, Arrhenius' definition didn't do a great job of describing how carbonate or sodium carbonate is a base. Well, what you do whenever you see a metallic ion attached to a chemical, just dissociate it off when it's in solution, right? And then carbonate actually does this in solution. It takes a proton from water, and so water becomes the Bronsted-Lowry acid to this Bronsted-Lowry base, and then you get bicarbonate ion form. Bi in chemistry means hydrogen. Bicarbonate or hydrogen carbonate ion. And hydroxide is left over when H loses an H positive, you get OH negative. This makes this, of course, because, the, the, well, this species right here, let's go back. This species right here, the Bronsted-Lowry base, has a conjugate acid here. And this Bronsted-Lowry acid has a conjugate base here. Here is a conjugate acid-base pair. Here is a conjugate acid-base pair. And very importantly to understand, hydroxide ion is formed in solution not because sodium carbonate dissociates into hydroxide, because it doesn't, but the carbonate reacts with water to make hydroxide ions. See, the thing is, Arrhenius is kind of right, hey? He's saying hydroxides is what bases do in solution and make. That's right. But they don't necessarily dissociate into OH negative. They actually make OH negative in solution. When you see that, you've got acid in solution. When you see this, that's base ion, and you've got base, right? Uh, that, that is going to this is going to have a pH that's going to be less than seven, and a pH is greater than seven because of the presence of hydronium or hydroxide. Okay, so now look at this last one here. Somebody might say, "Hey, take that equation right there." Somebody just on the street comes up to you, "Hey, take that equation right there and tell me who the Bronsted-Lowry acids and bases are." Well, look at it. How are you going to make these two chemicals from these two here? This is going to have to gain an H to become H2CO3. This is going to be the Bronsted-Lowry acid.
that donates to the Bronsted-Lowry base in this case. And by the way, that's called hydrogen sulfate, and that is a stronger acid than this is a strong base. Now, uh, 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 as a base, here's the thing. You're going to say, um, but these both have H's in it and both have negative charges. Does that mean that they're, they're kind of like water, which can act as a Bronsted-Lowry acid or base given the condition? Yeah, absolutely. Those kinds of chemicals that can act as Bronsted-Lowry acids or bases, depending on the situation, those are called amphiprotic chemicals. Um, some, the old term is amphoteric. It doesn't matter. Amphoteric or amphiprotic means it goes both ways kind of thing. What it does is it can act as a proton donor or a proton acceptor. Hey, now what does that mean for this equation again right here? That's Bronsted-Lowry acid, Bronsted-Lowry base. This turns it, if you're going back this way, this is going to be the conjugate acid, and this is the conjugate base, and so this right here is a Bronsted-Lowry acid-base pair, and this is a Bronsted-Lowry acid-base pair. I put 100% arrow there because that's a strong acid, but these guys are weak reactions that don't actually go quantitatively. I'll describe to you after a while how these Bronsted-Lowry equations should be written.